You shall be the mightier Samson. You shall be the greater Solomon. You shall be a more noble Joseph. Very often, good men go forward without being celebrated. I raise my glass and tip my hat to these particular men who are fathers and husbands because you are truly present and believe in your commitment to please God. This is your covenantal purpose. Your execution may seem easy on the basis that you love your family, but I know it's easier to disappear. Many men disappear, acting like young boys. In turn, mothers are held up high, so high that it really seems like she is all that God has made to raise a child. However, God's plan is for a man and a woman, a mother along with a father, with different but yet supporting roles to fulfill this blessing and commandment. Subjectively, motherhood casts a large shadow over the construction of a father's duty, and it is very often portrayed as if the husband doesn't do much in the marriage. But the word of God gives the man the responsibility of making the marriage work. It is on his shoulders that this heavy, heartfelt, and lovely covenant of a relationship is built. Not every man assumes the role and plays the part. That is what makes this a concerning and necessary task to present. While the woman is being praised by all, there are men who slowly back out, creeping away into dark territories. Not many are shocked that the husband is gone or daddy is absent. It seems to be the latest norm. In fact, some wonder what took him so long to leave. The coast has been clear since the day of I do. Since then, it's been about the wife and her fruitful contributions. This is to give a little voice to modest nobility of a man's man. The one who seeks no credit, no acknowledgement, and no praise. The great husband and righteous father. Simply put, we need more of you. In circumstances where men like you are lacking, destruction is birthing cyclical patterns we blindly discover. Look at how so many young men are in jail, imprisoned, or dead who were fatherless, if fatherhood is so unnecessary. Look and listen to how many fatherless young men speak to these young women like they do not have fathers themselves or as though they are not daughters of men. If fatherhood is so unnecessary, pay close attention to the way many young men avoid looking for work or fail to keep a job or to pursue higher education and even spiritual success who grew up without a father, if fatherhood is so unnecessary. Watch how young fatherless men often cannot recognize authority and address them accordingly, even for the sake of their own lives. If fatherhood is so unnecessary, draw your attention closely to how it's in painful toil and by the sweat of her brow, a single mother eats, if fatherhood is so unnecessary. There's a reason why little girls have a sparkle in their eyes for daddy. I hold not just a father, but a husband, a family man in high regard, and I honor you. You who have rebuked being a statistic. You who have abandoned and forsaken all others. You who have embraced responsibility. I recognize my brothers who hold their wives up on their shoulders, not as a burden, but as a queen who is too divine to walk upon the very ground we subdue. In these last days, this is the road less traveled. The honor in being a husband and or a father is seldom sought and not so much desired in the young person's dream. But these brothers rebuke and cast out the excuses the father of lies whispers to abandon and deny their gems. They honor their covenant and wear it like a shiny gold badge. They pray to be better to their spouse and are eager to romance her. They are the rock. These brothers have written Ephesians 5.28-33 through 33 on their heart, which says, In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it 
just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. I recognize my men who push their children not to fall, but to rise up to be greater than their own generation. I recognize my soldiers who are always at war, not to kill, but to tactically infiltrate, destroy, eradicate, and prevent the status of single mom and divorced woman. I recognize my brothers who carry out a will, the will of my father, because they love him, as in John 14, 15, where Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And John 15, 10 through 11, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. You are not popular, but I want you to be, because there are not enough of you like the harvest and workers. Do not be discouraged, because Jehovah sees you, and he takes great note. He has transcribed all that you have endured, and it will be your crowning on that day. The greater your perseverance, the greater your reward, my brothers. Be encouraged. Keep being faithful to your wife. Be encouraged. Continue to be honest to your children. And I pray they forever hold you in high regard as you boast in the Lord and the Holy Spirit manifesting within you high self-esteem. And you constantly seek God's approval by forever doing esteemable things. May your family respect you as often as they get to. May love connect you much more as it's meant to. May God bless you as much as he's kept you. May you be courageous in the valley as young David was before Goliath. May you be faithful with God's word as Abraham was with Isaac upward to Mount Moriah. May God be the object of your perseverance as he was with Apostle Paul despite the dire circumstances. May your children recognize the strength of a godly man such as these in you. And shall it come to be that your godliness be a catalyst for righteousness in them? You shall be the mightier Samson in the presence of your bride, wherein Jesus, your power, will never leave you. You shall be the greater Solomon in the eyes of your queen, as wisdom from God will be supported with his inspirational humility. You shall be a type of Joseph, as he was a type of Christ, as loyalty was evident when the opportunity to sin was confidential. Your wife shall submit to you as the church to Christ, as you bathe her mind with scripture and lay down your life for her. In your silence, the Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Ghost sees you, and the work that you have built on the foundation will survive, and you will receive your reward. Esteemable man, hold up your head in righteousness, declaring yourself a child of the Most High God. As Jesus says in Matthew 12, 50, his brother is whoever does the will of his Father in heaven. So do the will of his Father, submit to the convictions of the Holy Spirit, and obey the commands of the Son, as you, esteemable man, pastor your household. Blessed be the name of God, which is eternal, from everlasting to everlasting. God bless the husbands, and blessed be each father who is actively an esteemable man of God. So beloved, I ask you to please share this video of the esteemable man with others, and may you be blessed abundantly. Please prayerfully consider subscribing to support this channel, and like Moses struck the rock, strike the notification bell so that it may be known to you each time I deliver a word of encouragement. And please receive this benediction. May you walk in your anointing, yielding fully to the spirit of holiness. And may you fulfill your purpose, which is spiritual worship, giving all glory to the Father forever and ever. Amen.
Thank you, and God bless.